What's going on, everybody? Nick Lawson here from Squad Sports. Um, new feature uh, that we're getting started with. I hope everybody's on and joining. If not, we'll reshare this. But you know, with the with the restarts, with games coming back, you know, what I'm hearing a lot of in the sponsorship world is, you know, how do I how do I ensure that people are actually, um, let's say, uh, or that sponsors are actually. Um, going to want to continue to purchase my assets with the restart, whether there's no fans in the stands, whether there's, um, you know, there it's only on broadcast. Uh, so what are some ways that we can engage, even though the t the the teams or or your team is on broadcast instead of um, in your stadium? Um, so I wanted to go through a few activations. This is episode number one. Um, as we go live here again, I'll repost this, but episode number one, a common, common question that I'm getting is how to replace those handout offers um, that, that we were planning to use in our stadiums. Obviously, sponsors had coupons, they had offers, they had ways that they wanted to tactically give those out uh, to fans. What are some ways that uh, you all can kind of replace that and, and really grow uh, in your relationship with your sponsor uh, and, and keep that sponsorship intact, even though fans are sitting at home on television. So that's what we're going through today here. I'm excited to get that going uh, for you all. Um, and really, let's, let's dive into the problem first. Um, and I guess before I get started, this is a live segment, so shoot those comments over. I'd love, be happy to answer any questions that you have as I'm going for over this. But First thing that we have to think about is what's the problem, right? The big problem is there's no fans in the stands to hand coupons out to. Um, put, put, I guess, a little bit more uh, together as a problem statement. We used to have fans in our stands to be able to hand these out. The sponsor was expecting X amount of coupons to be put out because they were expecting Y amount of fans to go use them and redeem them. So the big problem here is you know, it's, it's, it's that we don't have fans in the stadium to be able to receive those coupons. If we really can structure on that problem, we can fully understand how to solve it and come up with a replacement sort of activation for it. So again, really important to understand, there's no fans in our stadiums to receive the coupons. Therefore, our goal should be, how do we get coupons into our fans' hands and incentivizing them to use them, even though they're watching from at home from on television and I don't really have your full attention maybe uh, because there's another broadcast there. Um, this campaign, again, is is going to be a text opt-in goal score digital contest. Terrible name for it. Do not call it that when you launch it. But really, our goal is going to be three things. One, we're going to want to pull fans into your game. And by that, I mean, again, when it's being broadcast through uh, CBS, Fox, whatever that may be, they're not in our world, right? Our fans are fully tuned into the broadcast that Fox is putting on. It's not our sponsorship, you know, it's not our brands that are showing up on commercials. So we have really need to find a way that's gonna pull them into kind of our world and pull them into our game um, to be able to get that, that same results and, and benefits on that side. The second thing is, as with anything, and, and a lot of sort of, a lot of insights have come out on this on sponsorship. Now, you know, data is the most important thing. It's always been massively important because digital ads have it, but we want to earn some first party data. We want to be able to earn some first party data that are really going to be able to pull um, those leads in for our sponsor, but then also for ourselves, so we can understand who's engaging with us, who's interacting with us, and we can take action on that. And the, se the third thing is obviously going back to the problem in the goal, right? <clears throat> the goal is to send um, touch-free offers, whether that's in stadium because you only have half of your fans in stadium or whether that's out of stadium because there's no fans. We need to find a way that we're sending offers where there's no touch. It's not a tactful thing that we're handing out. There's no touch to it. So those are really the three things that we're going to focus on for this campaign. The, the great thing about this campaign, and you'll see this as I dive into it, is going to be great for a variety of sponsors. With every team, there's going to be different reasons why, um, or, or different reasons why I want to activate uh, the coupon, right? If we think about restaurants, sort of that really pure couponing kind of piece, uh, restaurants are sending coupons uh, to get redemption in sales. That's what the goal is when they hand that coupon out. Whether it's a restaurant on the way home, whether it's near the stadium, whether it's you know really really prevalent in your local area around the stadium, restaurants' goal is to get them that person 
get that restaurant top of mind and then have an action piece. This will solve that. Obviously coupons going out means that fans have them, they can go use them. Uh, the second one, maybe not thought of as much, but auto, right? Auto partners are constantly looking for leads and connections as they build that brand with their fans. So, you know, as we think about auto partners right now with dealerships, you know, um, I wouldn't say closed, but there's not that big opportunity to get fans coming back into kind of the dealership um, just because it can't be a crowd. You can't have an event at a dealership. This is going to be a great way to earn those email leads so that that's, that dealership can still have a connection with the fan and even be able to follow up. So this would be a great activation as well. Obviously, you're not giving out probably coupons to Toyota, um, although you might, uh, you know, whether it's for service or, or anything like that. But really the goal here is going to be uh, for an auto dealership, if you're utilizing this, is grab those leads, build that connection. Retail, this is going to be key. I think the key thing for retail right now for an activation like this and really any couponing is um, easy to have uh, – coupon lead to e-commerce purchase. Having the ability to say, hey, you've earned this, click this button in this email to jump over to our retail store to make those purchases um, is gonna be key. So if you have any retail, <clears throat> whether it's clothing, whether it's you know auto care, whatever that is, you know, the key thing that they're probably gonna be interested in is how do we get this to get online sales uh, and lead some of your fans to that. And the last one is gaming. Casinos have been really, really hit hard um, you know, recently with this, some of them are still opening up. The biggest thing you can do for a casino is get leads, but also get uh, people into their loyalty program. So your coupon could be, you know, a free buffet or 10 free spins or whatever that may be, um, but they also have to go to the loyalty program, I, I guess, kiosk or sign up digitally to be able to get that. As casinos open back up, they need a list of people to contact to really pull back in. This coupon distribution will help them pull them back in and have those emails to do to, to retarget and do leads. So again, this activation is going to be key for a number of, of, of segments. I haven't hit them all. I mean, banks, financial services, they would be great for them as well, just for lead generation. But really, as we think about this, is how we can get fans, you know, into the stadium sorry, into the sponsor's location through a coupon on that side. Um, so step one. What we're going to want to do is create a text program that allows you to send texts uh, from fans who opt in. Very simple. You already probably have this with your ticketing office. No reason why you can't do it uh, with your um, with your sponsorship. Um, but we'll want to have those so that sort of thing uh, set up. Zipwhip's been good. Twilio's obviously that really big one that's really flexible. Uh, on that side, simple texting is another one. It's cheap, but it's really good as well. But we're going to have to set up some sort of program so fans can text in and opt into a program uh, on that side. So that's kind of your first step. Let's get that program, let's research a few. Bandwidth is another one as well that you can look at. Uh, again, Zip Whip and Simple Texting are kind of the easiest plug and play ones that I've seen on that side. Step two is you're gonna have your, that fan opt in for access uh, to text up updates on the contest, right? So the first thing is, is you're gonna say, hey, text goal uh, to you know, 837-378. Um, and you can even, as you see here, kind of on, on the slide, um, you can even have it say sponsor name goal or sponsor name goal contest. You make the fan, make it well known that, hey, you know, the first time a uh, one of your players scores a goal, um, we'll text you uh, with, with a contest that you can play. Uh, so as you can see there, the fans texting that, hey, sponsor goal, uh, thanks for playing sponsor name goal. Um, we'll text you when the first goal is scored in the next game with the link to play. Be sure you have your phone with you while you watch the game. The key thing here is a couple things. One, you're getting that opt-in. You're getting that fan, say, yes, I'm engaged, I'm intrigued, I want to be pulled in to your ecosystem. The second thing that it's going to do it's this easy distribution. You don't have to bet that that fan is going to be on Twitter when you run this. You know that they're opting in, they want to get this, and they're going to get a text that's going to allow them to do that. Whether they're watching the game or not, you're pulling them back into their world, your world, and that's going to be much more beneficial as we get that going. So have that kind of opt-in, let fans know about it, have it be tied to some sort of game. Like if it's basketball and it's to restart, let's do the first three-pointer, right? What's going to be the first three-pointer scored by, you know, whoever it may be, by LeBron James? Um, that's when the text goes out. You know, for hockey, it's goal, maybe assist. Um, if it's a good play, like an all-state assist type of thing, uh, that would be a good play as well. But again, our goal is to pull them into our domain, pull them into 
um, into our kind of environment of the game, whether they're watching or not, and really have them opt in to interact. So that's the first step, letting them know, hey, you're going to opt in. Then when the goal is scored, um, you're going to be able to send that text out to the fan uh, to, to play the digital contest. So it's, you know, your team goal, uh, click here to play, sponsor name, you know, goal scratch and win, for example. There's a short link, first 100 fans guaranteed uh, uh, a prize, right? So we're, we're almost putting a little bit of uh, exclusivity there, right? Not only did you have to opt in, but you have to be the first 100 to play to try to win a prize. Again, when that goal happens, you're getting that text. And you're getting that text, you're like, hey, that's right, this team's playing. And even if you're not watching, you're pulled in. You're getting that sponsor interaction because it should be all branded with your sponsor. But again, when there's that milestone, all of a sudden the text comes out. I mean, the and you know, Twitter's gonna be going crazy with, hey, you know, I got the text, this is awesome. I played this campaign. Um, but again, it's pulling people back into your experience um, to be able to have them interact with that sponsor. Um, you know. There's a numerous amounts of activations. At Squad, we have a scratch and win. It's uh, web-based. There's no additional app. It's really easy to set up and customize, and it emails the offer automatically to the fan, no touch. Obviously, there's a ton of activations out there that you could easily plug this into, ton of great companies that do that. Um, but from our standpoint, at Squad, what we're looking at is that scratch and win. Hey, the goal is scored. You're going to scratch. You're going to win. And the main reason is, is um, the key thing here, and we'll get to this in a second, is the average in-store redemption rate of our of our uh, coupons is fifty percent, six percent. That's leading. That's trackable sales uh, that that you can show your sponsor that it led to. So again, whatever contest you kind of put in there, that's awesome. Um, but you know, our scratch and win has been a great kind of contest that you can put in there. Click through. They play. They win. They're excited. They get that email. Um, this is going to be a key piece. I've talked about this a little bit before, but as you're collecting that email and you're getting that attention, this is a perfect time to almost um, uh, get exponentially better in sponsorship and in marketing for your team. And by that, I mean, don't just do the contest and then say, okay, great, the contest is done. How can that data that you've earned, that attention that you've earned, lead to another follow, right? And I'm thinking, I'm, I'm, the best way I can think to put this is, people who purchased this also purchased this, right? And that always leads to more sales, right? So the follow-up magic I have for this campaign is this. As we get into this uh, and we send the text out and fans are playing to win and they're excited, after the game, send a quick text that says, hey, um, you know, click here uh, for some exclusive Snapchat content. You can tie the sponsor to that behind the scenes, but click here and have us engage more on a platform that I maybe don't have a lot of following on that I wanna build, right? Because what fans will do if they're on Snapchat, which they probably are, uh, demographically speaking and, and all of that, if you look at the numbers, they'll click that, it'll jump right over to your Snapchat, snap, snap, I'm gonna say snap back, Snapchat page, um, and allow them to follow you, see the content, and get used to you interacting there. And again, let's fill that with more sponsored content. All the behind the scenes Snapchat content should be sponsored by the same sponsor that does the goal. Two packages, two pieces, two campaigns, great context out of one activation. That's really the power kind of of this. We're gonna get the coupon to get the fan come in and purchase. And then on the back side, we're gonna be able to get them to follow on Snapchat so we can hit them and engage with them more and more on that side. So that's the follow-up kind of magic there. These are things you should be looking for in every activation that you do uh, kind of with this. If you're going to do an activation like this, there should always be a follow-on to follow or engage with your YouTube channel. Um, your, your Instagram, your Snapchat, your TikTok, whatever that may be. Again, we're trying to build our own distribution channels. If this can get you to get to 10,000, 1,000, even 500 more Snapchat followers, that's an audience that you can really build off of. So that's kind of the follow-up magic there. Key benefits to the campaign, I don't think it really needs to fully be said, but you can send offers with no fans in the stands. Again, going back to the problem, the problem was, how do we get these coupons that our sponsor expected from us out to our fans, this is a great way to sort of do that. It's gonna send that offer uh, with no fans in the stands to a bunch of your fans. You know, For Scratchers, we have a geolocate 
sort of piece to it. So you can actually geolocate who can play. So it could be just right there. But it's going to do that job of a touchless experience. Whether you have fans in the stands and fans at home, whatever that may be, fans in the stands can still play this activation. Fans at home can still play this activation. It's going to get the job done. The sponsor usually is paying for you for coupon reach with your with your fans. This is going to be able to do that. Uh, the second, again, that that new asset, that second piece, what we always should be looking for, it's going to build your Snapchat following. That is massively, massively, massively valuable to you in the future. If you look at how much brands are spending on Snapchat, YouTube, whatever, whatever those channels are, the more you can build up on these channels, the more value you can bring to that sponsor, especially with this context. You're playing the contest, you're then getting a text to go engage on Snapchat, and there's more branded content there, especially for a younger demographic, um, which you know Snapchat tops out at around 40 um, on that side. But for that younger demographic, this is a great way to go to a sponsor and say, hey, we're going to reach young fans for you. We're going to be able to get on the platform that's going to have a lot of our young fans and be able to build that up. And the third is, I think this is the most important here. It's going to build a habit, right? We're gonna build an engagement habit so that fan knows every game that there's gonna be a first goal contest with the scratch and win where I can win you know, a free medium pizza, right? Every game, they're trained for it, they're expecting it, and they're coming back to engage. That's what we have to build here. We, we can't afford, with how much we've lost in the shutdown, we can't afford to make a bet that somebody's gonna know your game is happening right now and wanna jump on Twitter and with all the things that's distracting them on their Twitter feed, engage with your team's activation. We can't, we can't bet on that. Will it work? Will you get activation and, and engagement? Absolutely, but let's not bet on it. Let's create a curated list of fans who really want to interact. Let's build that list every week, and then let's send out some offers, some coupons, and build that habit of coming back each week on that end. And this is really the big piece to it. When we, you know, I, I want to chat more about this uh, overall in my content. But this is the really, really big piece here. Uh, this, I call it the sponsorship levels. And really, it's just, it's just the ad funnel levels. But in sponsorship, we really need to understand it. The big thing here is this is all trackable toward your sponsor success metric, right? So as we look at the top level here, we have awareness. People saw the activation, right? Whether it's posting on Twitter, hey, don't forget, opt in on this text. Um, whether it's you know, people just signing up, but maybe they don't play. There's that awareness factor. Right? How can we make that as big as possible to let fans know that this is going on? The second piece of that is engagement. How many fans actually play the scratch and win based on that coupon? We're going to want to funnel that down and get fans playing and winning those coupons because that leads to the third one that we should always have in our sponsorship packages, which is purchase and action. Most of the time, 90% of the time, sponsors aren't sponsoring us because they love our team. That's a piece to it, but they have to get some dollars back. This is advertising, right? There's always going to be somebody there who needs to see the numbers. And really, our goal is to help you get more sales through our through the through the the fan base that we've built, right? So the third level is action. How do we make it as easy as possible to redeem that coupon at that sponsor? And then being able to go back to that sponsor instead of just saying, hey, we handed out 10,000, actually being able to go back and say, hey, look, this is how many coupons we sent out. Here's how many were actually used or actually opened. Here's how many who weren't. Let's cross-reference with your database. How many were used? How many weren't? Great. There's five segments right there that we can go retarget. And that's the last piece, right? The retargeting piece. You can literally have it so that if a fan played, won a coupon, didn't actually go use it, that the sponsor can either retarget them with some social media ads to say, hey, don't, you know, come to our location, or an email campaign from one of the, you know, one of the owners at the restaurant, hey, thanks so much for playing the scratch and win goal. We love this activation. Uh, you know, I want to invite you to come use it. Here's an extra breadsticks when you use your coupon. And that's going to lead to that sale. Because again, our goal is always that sale for everybody who we don't Get that sale from or even the people who we do get that sale from we want to retarget them and get them coming back so the beautiful thing about this activation and this is what i base all of sort of our di digital activations on is the beautiful thing about this activation is that um, it hits every level every single one of your activations should hit every single level of these and this is a good barometer to see hey are we really bringing the same value that let's say a digital ad would bring kind of on that end 
That's all I got for you today. Again, the activation, first goal, first three-pointer coupon shootout. Uh, have a text opt-in. We're going to collect some phone numbers when that happens. We're going to send some coupons out. But more importantly, as I said on the last slide, we're going to have trackable metrics that we're able to utilize and use um, to be able to show our sponsor, look, you paid for this. We have no fans in our stands right now, but you're going to get th that same result, right? I want to get you that same result, if not better, than what you paid for when you thought games were going on. This is a great way to do that. And I think the last piece before I jump off here is you're taking somebody and you're bringing them back into your domain, right? That's the biggest piece here. I can't stress enough that it's not good enough to kind of sit there and say, well, we're going to do some tweets during the game and fans will engage with them. We need to be pulling them back into our domain into our game experience. We can't rely that they're going to be on television and come naturally back to our Twitter feed or our Facebook feed or whatever that may be. We need to pull them in. The text opt-in is a great way to pull them in and, and again, create some of those assets that are going to keep them uh, coming back. Um, so thanks, everybody, for tuning in and listening. No questions here. That's, that's tough. I was hoping some people would jump in with some questions, ask some questions, see about that. Um, but again, my goal is to get crazy tactical. My goal here is to always bring you guys, bring you all uh, value as we kind of get this going. And I think the restart is a perfect opportunity to kind of go through some of these activation ideas. Maybe it's not technically an opt-in goal, but it's a variation of it. That's my goal. I hope, I hope that this helps you rethink kind of those things and say, hey, look, we can't just fully just tweet the game. We have to do activations like this. So this is episode one. Episode two is going to come maybe Friday, maybe Tuesday. I'm trying to get that together. It's not really a, a set thing on that end. But thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Um, as always, keep pushing those limits within sports sponsorship. Mm -hmm.